Welcome back to RG Geek. So those of you who know me well know that I'm a big fan of pole position and I was hoping with these analog sticks I could play it somehow analog but I haven't figured out a way to do that. But I'm going to show you through three of my favorite ways to play pole position on the RG 350M. So I'm going to start with the Game Boy Advance Namco Museum. It has a pretty good port here. Get through the menus. There we go. A little bit of pole position. Okay, so A starts the game, and R1 is your shift, both up and down, which I find kind of weird, and then B is your break. Do you see it looks pretty good? It's pole position. <laughs> I find the controls a bit sensitive, but you get used to them after a while. The controls are really what um, makes me not play this too much, because I think it's... I don't like having the same button for both shifts, and uh, it just feels a bit too sensitive. Ah, I don't feel like I get the fine control that I really want to have in such a game. There we go, Rick. But anyway, it looks pretty good. Oh, see, so I forget to shift. And this version is pretty easy to qualify as well. So anyway, I want to show you the other versions. So up here, and I have this artwork in simple menu, and take you to the seventy eight hundred, which is my second favorite way to play. So these controls are the left button, whatever you've uh, mapped it to, is accelerate, then up is upshift, down is downshift, and the second button is your break. And I think this looks pretty cool. I mean, it's not realistic to the arcade, but I think it's also a much better one if you're a beginner at pole position, wanna work on your skills before moving up to the arcade version. It's very forgiving. So, it's also really amazing what they managed to do with the 7800 hardware. They didn't have that much memory and stuff to work with. And this was the game that came with the system as well. Let's see, ace to pull position. This thing is a brilliantly done port, which makes sense since they included this when you bought a new Atari 7800 back in the day. Alright, so, and also notice that you've got the other three tracks you could choose from to play in this as well, which is nice for some variety. If you want something easier or harder, then just set it up. Alright, let's look. I have an honorable mention now. 7800, i got to do that. So the honorable mention is the... 2600 version, which I don't honestly think is that worth playing, but it's worth just looking at because what they managed to do with the hardware, you've got like, I think it was 128, um, 128 kilobytes of RAM to work with, and they managed to get this, I mean, they can't even get the um, speedometer on there, it's just a bar across the top. but. Despite that, and despite the very primitive graphics, they've made a very playable game. It's fun. I mean, it doesn't feel quite like pole position, but it was amazing what they were able to do with the resources they had at the time. And I also want to mention that the Vectrex version is also very good. Shockingly good. But I play Vectrex on my iPad, so I don't bother to set that up here. I think I get a better experience there. So. Uh, one thing to note about this too is that um, you have an automatic acceleration because there was only one button and the one button you have is for braking and upshift is down so it's the backwards of the 7800 version but anyway let's get to what i consider the best way to play 
pole position on the RG350M, and that is the Namco Museum Volume 3 on the PlayStation. Let's go in there. Namco. So when I first played this, I thought it accepted the um, analog controller, but it actually doesn't. This was actually published before uh, Sony published their analog controller, and but it does support what's they call the NegCon controller, which uh, Namco themselves made. Before I go into this, I want to show you. If you hit X, you get um, you can change position. Oh, yeah, PlayStation. This is the action button. So I could adjust the screen, but I mean, no problem here. It's neat. You get access to all the dips. Uh, <laughs> All the switches of the original dip switches of the original arcade machine, so you can change everything as if you were at the arcade machine, which is crazy to put that much detail into this app. So like right now, I think I've got this set to okay, it's on. So yeah, when it's that means the sound of the attract mode is on. I mean, even that kind of detail they have. So you can really, but I mean, the whole point is this museum. It's the they want to give you. And you can have uh, eight different control types. I choose type B. I like, um, particularly like downshifting with L and upshifting with R. So let's get into a game. And you start the game by pushing select. So start with select. And then you've also got the four options just like before. So Fuji is now named Namco. And what was Suzuka in the other version is Wonder here. And this plays pretty much like the arcade version, just obviously there's no steering wheel. And it's just brilliantly done. And it's as hard as the arcade too. I feel like I get about the same performance when I play here as I do when I play in the arcade. Down shift. Don't hit the billboard. Yes. Up shift. Yep. So I think this is a brilliant port. I. I think they pretty much just took the main ROM and um, just added their own controls to it. Oh, just downshift now for the start. So if you want to play pole position on your RG350 until someone decides to map the NegCon controller to the analog sticks, this is the way you're going to do it. Ah, don't shift, and I'm gonna wreck. And that's a good way to end it. So, thanks for watching. I hope this was of help to you. And enjoy playing pole position on your RG. See you next time.